So welcome to our third and final panel session of today's series on, on Germany. I'm happy to welcome my panelists again. Uh, Joanna Popovic Kanaki from Masterpiece, Joe Samara Smith, Biggie Gaming and IOS Gaming, and Luca Andrich, Managing Director of the German Sports Betting Association. My name is Jörg Hoffmann, and I'm going to introduce you to our final topic now. We are looking into the future um, and trying to adopt what needs to be, what should be implemented and improved with German gambling regulation. For now, we know what the Interstate Treaty provided. It provided lots of challenges for the regulated market. It provided a tax burden, which is almost not feasible unless operators reduce their return uh, to players, which makes them or provides them with an, a competitive disadvantage. These are massive burdens that they try to be part of a new area of a regulated market in Germany. This is the white market. Apart from this, there is a black market. And in between, there might be enforcement against the black market and everybody is going to contribute. We should talk about probably what is done wrong and what can be done better in the future. And I think it's really time to talk about it and it's more time to implement the improvements. So let me start first with Joanna. Um, from the operator's perspective, what are the biggest challenges for you? What do you think needs to be changed? Mm. Oh, well, you know, there are definitely many challenges for, for us being a startup or as, uh, as one of our founders like to say, a new kid on the block, uh, you know, like establishing, staffing, building the company from, from, from scratch in COVID times and, and work from home time. But okay, that's a, that's a slightly different topic. So um, I'd like to highlight the biggest challenge for, for us is, um, is the lack of enforcement on the unlicensed operators. So why? Why is this the biggest challenge for us? Because um, the whole purpose of the regulation is, in, in any industry basically, that it creates the rules that everyone obeys, regardless of the actual rules. So, you know, fair, not fair, do we like them, do we don't like them? They're there and they are to be obeyed. And everyone that wants to conduct the business in, in a certain vertical or verticals have to follow the, the very same set of rules. And, um, and the ones that are not, then are the subject to enforcement from, from the regulatory bodies. Well, we all know that, that this is not how it is today. It's not the case, right? Yes, it, it, it will be one day, hopefully very soon. But um, until that time comes, you know, it's, it's extremely difficult to, to acquire, to retain a player um, that, was, that has way less options with, with us licensed operators than with the non-licensed ones. So uh, the offer that Joe mentioned, the RTP, the, the jackpots even, you know, the bonuses, the bonus amounts and all that, you know, good stuff basically <laughs> that uh, the players are already used to. And, and when we said old, old, old um, you know, habits die hard. So, um, but, but not only to, to complain, so <laughs> what is needed to, to overcome this challenge, um, in my opinion, is just one thing. It's it's time. We need to to, to you know to leave some time for for the authorities to actually do some enforcement to enforcement to find a way how to do it, and also for the players to to get used to the the new reality sort of. Um, um, we at Masterpiece Gaming have the time, so we came into the market and we came to stay. But yeah, probably we will also try to build up a level of confidence that the new generation of regulators learns that there is an industry they can trust. And it's not only the criminal elements uh, they've been facing in the past, probably. I think this is important. Final question um, for you again. Um, Germany, although you're seeing this very uncomfortable situation, you made the decision, we go into Germany or we, we invest in Germany. Why? Why wouldn't you be reluctant and follow those who seize their offerings or not even launch it? I like this question the most. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, you know, two very clear reasons why, why we decided to do this in, very, in this most difficult time. So, first of all, Germany is our home country. And as you all might know, Masterpiece Gaming is a daughter company of ProSieben. So, it was 
it was somehow very logical for us to start in our own uh, in our own country, in our own backyard, so to say. So yes, the regulation is not is not the easiest in the world, but uh, we also see um, us being completely new in in, in these times um, to have a slight ad- advantage over over you know the already existing operators because. We don't have any legacy whatsoever. We don't have, you know, players that used to play before with us. So everyone that comes to our platform interested in our brand are, are the players that are already playing by the new rule. And um, um, the second uh, very, very clear reason is um, that once we reach our, our goals that we have set ahead of us, and, and you said they're high, so once we've uh, reached the goals in German market, it would be much easier for us to to expand and 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 launch new brands in any other country because we can always say that guys with German regulation we've seen it all <laughs> and nothing can surprise us anymore. See, for all of us, it will be very interesting to monitor the development and the success of. Jack One, because it's a completely new brand and the market is not a new market. There are lots of uh, offerings available. So it's interesting to see that there is a chance to establish a new brand, even among that competition that is existing, it's all the, the incumbents around you. So we, we keep us posted. Um, Joe, from your international perspective, if you compare Germany to other, let's say, European jurisdictions, with all these do's and don'ts, regulators and lawmakers could learn. Um, what would you say? What are the, the 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 reference markets Germany should look at in order to find examples uh, for the do's and probably for the don'ts as well? It's it's interesting because. If you look at what Canada Canada is in the process of taxing and regulating, and is well Ontario is anyway, and so new, new European Union member state, I guess. <laughs> uh, I mean, they they are in a, but they're in a very similar position. Their timings are similar to Germany. There was a very large unregulated, what they would call a grey market, but what you know, pre-regulation yeah. market, and they. They brought in Birgit Sands, who was the Danish regulator, to advise them on what a good regulatory system looked like, advise them on the tax rate, advise them what the best way to get the largest number of grey market operators to uh, to actually all apply for licenses and how to keep out the people who didn't apply for licenses. And we're going to run off Curacao or other, other you, know, you know, South American licenses or whatever. And... I, that seems to me it's such a, such a missed opportunity that Germany could easily have you know there are there are lots of examples on the door on their doorstep you know whether they they want to go for a really strict market like France or Portugal with a high tax rate uh, and and limited number of operators or like Belgium for example they could have they could have gone for that or they could have gone for a, a Holland type model or they could have gone something for more like the UK Sweden and Denmark which is allows more operators into the market and more competition and it's probably better for the customer the customer offering is more attractive but the unsatisfactory thing is that they seem to have just not really looked at all at any of them and what they've produced is something that is the worst of all worlds because what they're what they're saying to the outside world is is we want player protection but everybody in the industry knows that what they've put in place will mean that the German players are the least protected in the whole of Europe because they will be playing in black with black market sites. So I, it would be lovely to think that the regulator, once they've you know, recruited enough people, they've sat down, they've looked at the problem and they go back to the politicians and just say, this isn't working. There are some good models in the rest of Europe. We would like to copy this uh, and we would also like to have an enforcement arm to keep the black market out. But that's not going to be quick. I mean, if you look at the UK Gambling Commission, it took them seven or eight years since they were they, you know, they basically took over the online market to really sort of get a proper understanding of how it all fitted together. And there's, that's a lot of lost revenue, and that's a lot of customers who are not protected. If that's what happens happens in Germany, so you know, my wish would be that they brought in some you know, some regulators from other countries and said, 
what what should we be doing? And that they realise that there's a mess quite early. But in fact, actually, it will be a lagging indicator because when the customers get cheated or, you know, the black market operators don't pay them or there's a big problem, that will only get reported in the media and then it will only get to court in two years' time. And then the politicians will say, oh, something must be done about it. And then, oh, but you need to recruit people. So it's just a really, really long process. And, uh, you know, I'm sure Luca and, you know, hit other, other colleagues and other lobbying organisations will be making this case. But I'm not actually sure the, who the people who are listening are, because at the moment it doesn't appear that there's anybody, particularly not the politicians. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, you mentioned, uh, you raised a very, very interesting um, thing that um, I think the, the benchmark for success is the amount of channeled players, the amount of channeling players from the black market to the white market and not the other direction, not into the other direction. And you mentioned Birgitta Sand. And uh, well, she stands for the Danish model, which was very successful uh, for all these years. One of the most successful, successful models across Europe, if not worldwide. And uh, I remember Birgitta Sand saying, it's two criteria, two key factors for a successful regulation. One is content. The other one is taxation. If this is too restrictive and too non-competitive, you will not channelize the traffic you want to. And the jurisdictions you were naming are the best examples for successful or not successful. So fingers crossed that we take these benchmark as a reference to see whether German regulation serves to protect players. I doubt it as you do, because you can only protect players in an environment where players play. Well, you, you only have to look at what's happened in Sweden, where the much tougher regulations on operators have, has meant that the channelization was at about 85% when they opened the market up. And now it's at about 60% and dropping. So it, it, there's clear evidence that if you, if you want to look at it, you can actually see what happens in, a, in another territory nearby and why it's a bad idea. So this is the bad news for you, Luca. Um, it's time to interrupt your lovely holiday in lovely Italy, drive back home and start lobbying for a better future with the trade associations in Germany. What can be done in terms of lobbying? You talked, and all the, the, the associations, they talked a lot to responsible politicians, uh, lawmakers, influencers, regulators. Obviously, they never listened. And obviously, this is because it's the 16 lender issue we have. And signing a compromise may be the biggest, the biggest mistake, but it means it's the most restrictive and most hardlining paper that can be signed by the 16th prime minister who is reluctant against any sort of regulation. But if they realize we could have done better, what are you going to do to tell them, look, what you have done? That's a good question. I mean, to, to pick up from, from the previous discussions, we, we did, in fact, um, you know, uh, work with uh, Birgitte Zandt, uh, the Danish regulator. She came to Germany on multiple occasions, and um, I think we had good conversations with her and with regulators. The difficulty, again, is you, you perhaps managed to convince um, those who are willing and interested and, and sort of liberally minded and and um but then again among these 16 states which have to take the decisions together you have multiple um states and and prime ministers who are not willing to listen and so there's a sort of proxy battle and you have to equip those who who, who are interested in good regulation with the right arguments and that's what we'll be doing the difficulty or the challenge that I see in the next couple of months and years is actually, you know, I mean, you sort of putting a, a or quantifying the black market and, and the success of channelization because the starting point at the moment is, um, uh, you know, in, in, in doubt or let, let, let me put it this way, the... German regulators seem to be of the opinion that the online casino market in Germany has uh, shrunk for um, uh, several years. And um, they they have a small company that's gathering data for them, but I think, or we think they have a very skewed view on, on the current market. And um, what we need to um, establish is a robust 
sort of, uh, or we need to have robust tools to measure channelization and to measure the size of the black market in, in Germany in the future and the development of, of uh, uh, channelization. And that's one of the key challenges that we're working on and, and to to actually show the effects of, of uh, the regulation. And um, uh, yeah, that, that will be the uh, the one of the key priorities and and obviously we need to continue um, talking to regulators and especially the newly established authority in Saxony and Anhalt will we are already we started the dialogue with them but as as you mentioned they are still sort of in the setup in a setup mode and they're still recruiting staff so it's a sort of you know piecemeal and ongoing process but um, at the end of the day, the good news is that, I mean, hopefully they will take ownership of this regulation. And, you know, once you have a regulatory authority that is responsible for, for this regulation, they they also need to kind of, you know, um, you know, justify why perhaps things aren't working well in Germany compared to other EU states. And and um, so, so that's the, the, the hope that the, the people who who will be responsible in in this new uh, authority, they, they they actually do take ownership for for um, you know Germany being a well regulated gambling market. So communication communication should be based on evidence, education, not just lobbying in the inner sense, but creating this dialogue. And uh, I think we need some time. Uh, Let's do a final round of 10 seconds, spontaneous brainstorm ideas. What is the main issue you would like to see fixed as soon as possible? Joanna. Enforcement. <laughs> Enforcement right. on, the, on the black market. Thank you. Joe. Uh, change from the tax on um, turnover to a gross gaming revenue model, which is clearly better for the consumer and better for the tax take overall. What's left for you, Luca? Well, I mean, uh, then then I'll say something about the process. I, I think we need a quicker um, process of iterating the state treaty. We cannot afford to kind of have a new state treaty every 10 or 12 years. We need to, you know, have regular change every two to three years, as you say, evidence-based, but we need to have a quicker sort of pace of, of um, I iterating uh, the... Right. the I understand. That's, that's a good point. My one would be the assessment, the evaluation of success or no success as soon as possible, not just in two or three years, but probably next year. With that, i like to thank my panelists for their excellent contributions. I like people outside who listened to what we discussed here to say thank you very much for your attention. We are all in the same boat, as we say in Germany, uh, experiences this new area of regulation in Germany. So good luck to all of you and hope to see you soon in person somewhere on conference. Thanks to Clarion for putting this together, ICE 365 World Regulatory Briefing Series. Bye-bye from Germany. <laughs>